For the longest time, I never understood the countless stories of angry parents who screamed at their kids and were complete monsters to be around while their kids were young. I never understood the guys who, with all honesty, said that they worked late and did more deals and tried to make more money just so that they didn't have to go home for dinner. Now I understand it. Four months ago, the day before my third child was born, I felt like I was on top of the world. My career was exploding beyond my wildest dreams. I was working less than ever, and I had more fun and made more money while I was working. I hadn't dropped a fitness habit since college, and I was feeling strong and healthy. My social relationships were thriving and developing nicely. I was mentally stronger and sharper than ever before, and I could go into any challenging deal or discussion with confidence. My hobbies, like golf, were tough but rewarding. I had stopped watching porn about six months earlier, and my sex life with my wife was really rocking in a way that I wasn't really sure if I'd ever see again. Shit was really going right, and I was firing on all cylinders. But I'll be honest when I say the last four months have been extremely hard and a serious new challenge for me. I feel like a fish out of water, totally uncomfortable, and like I'm genuinely failing at something for the first time in the 33 years I've been sucking breaths of air on this planet. Because when that beautiful and healthy baby girl came home four months ago, to this day, the two and four-year-old boys went from being 80% my wife's responsibility and 20% mine to 80% my responsibility and 20% hers. Four months ago, we brought home our third baby, and that changed everything. The two older boys became my responsibility. I got them up. I changed their shit diapers in the morning. I fed them breakfast. I got them changed and off to school every day. I took them to school. I picked them up and brought them home. I played with them. I sat them down for dinner. And while my wife cleaned the kitchen or nursed the baby, I'd give them baths, read them books, and put them down for bed. Every day. My wife was obviously suffering with the new one, not sleeping, still isn't sleeping, recovering from the delivery, navigating breastfeeding, and still managing our homes, bills, doctor's appointments, health insurance, all the things with the business that she looks after, and so much more that's in, involved with managing a house and our family. But I was struggling, and I'm still struggling. With a new baby to take attention from mommy, my two-year-old turned into a monster. He turned three in July, so now he's three, but potty training has not gone well. He has the emotional stability of a drunk sorority girl and the temper and demeanor of a roid raging UFC fighter. He's also super o OCD. He has to have the right toy at the right place and everything else has to be perfect at all times. To give you an example, I accidentally flushed his shit down the toilet. He always does that. And he had a 45 minute tantrum that ended with a tumble off the couch and a profusely bloody lip. If he drops his toy in the back of my truck on the way to school, he suddenly wants his brother's toy and he bursts out in hyperventilating screams that last for 15 minutes plus. If I put him in a pair of pajamas that don't match his brothers, he'll kick and scream until he turns purple and nearly passes out. And what's worse is that his now five-year-old brother acts like a three-year-old when he's around them, when he's around his younger brother, because he thinks that the temper tantrums 20 times a day are normal, and it draws him down to that level of normal. When my kids are separate, they're angels. We have a ton of fun, they're mature, and they don't fight. But when they're together, they're like oil and water. I got the wake-up call about a month ago when my wife told me, well, she pulled me aside after dinner, and she said, Nick, we need a chat. She said, Nick, you know how you get back from playing golf with some people and you complain that they're grumpy? How their negative attitude on the golf course brings down the entire vibe, ruins the fun, and hurts your own game? Those grumpy people on the golf course? Well, 
I feel like I'm in a golf cart with a grumpy ass player and that player is you. It hit me like a ton of bricks because she's so right. I was grumpy. I was walking around the house like a cloud of uh, a storm cloud over my head and her and the kids were all feeding on my negative energy. So I attacked the next day, the next day. I attacked it. I literally stood in front of the mirror and gave myself a pump up talk like I do before big podcast interviews or investor calls or real estate negotiations. Nick, you have this. Your son won't get to you today and nothing can bring down your positive energy. You are going to be happy. You are going to smile. You are going to be the golfer that shanks the ball out of bounds with a smile and a shrug while carrying on a lively, fun conversation with those around you. 45 minutes later, my kid threw his entire bowl of cereal at his brother and laughed at my face while I tried having a calm talk with him in the other room. I lost my shit, went into the garage, and cursed at the top of my lungs. We spoke to the pediatrician and a behavioral specialist. Both say my son is completely normal. All these behaviors are what normal kids do, and he's totally fine. It was honestly brutal for me to hear that. Parenting is freaking hard. No matter how much help you get, no matter how many date nights you have, no matter how well you off you are financially, and no matter how good the daycare is that you drop the math at, off at, and no matter how badass your wife is at being a mother, parenting is freaking hard. There have, of course, been great times, and I'm getting better at what I do. I'm getting better at negotiating with him. I got the sticker system, and dare I say it, that the entire last week has been more fun than not fun. I haven't screamed at the kids in weeks. I took what my wife said very seriously, and I haven't let her see me get grumpy since that day. We've made a plan to separate the kids from each other, and when we do that, they're angels and we bond. Especially me and my five-year-old, we really have a ton of fun when his three-year-old brother's not around. But we can't really do it that often because my wife would then be two-on-one with a baby that doesn't sleep at night and a kid who has a ton of needs as well. All of this has been a humbling experience and just the kind of kick in the ass I needed when I was starting to get cocky and feel like I could really dominate this life that I'm living. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. I'm improving, and I know that I'll be an excellent father, but I'm not there yet. I think I finally talked my wife into getting a night nanny so she can actually sleep, get up at normal times, and feel happy and healthy. For the longest time, I never understood the countless stories of angry parents who screamed at their kids and were complete monsters to be around while their kids were young. I never understood why fathers would go out and do housework all day Saturday or mow the grass on Wednesday nights just to get outside and get away from their kids and their wives while their wives were inside trying to keep their head above water solo. I never understood the guys who, with all honesty, said that they worked late and did more deals and tried to make more money just so that they didn't have to go home for dinner. Now I understand it. I understand how those men feel. I'm not going to let myself become selfish enough to do that, but I do understand it. I actually get it. It isn't that crazy that somebody would do those things because this stuff is really, really hard. It's challenging to me. It's making me better, and it's keeping me from becoming a rich asshole who doesn't know how to suffer with grace, which is my biggest fear in life. My biggest fear in this life is becoming soft. So I hate it, but I love it. I love the life that my wife and I are building together. I love that there will be a lot of sweat and tears behind the life we get to enjoy when we're 40, 50, 60 years old. We're going to keep having kids. My wife is already on board for the next one. And if delivery goes well, we'll try for number five or number six, I'm sure. Because at the end of the day, my wife and I have the same goal. To give our kids a ton of opportunity and bring more folks into the world who are good people, know how to add a lot of value to those around them, and can suffer with grace. In a way, I think my parenting style is kind of putting it on hard mode for myself. 
because I make it that way for myself on purpose. I'm already trying to teach my boys to suffer with grace, even though they might not be emotionally mature enough to really handle it. I never give in when they make irrational demands or act like brats. I don't mind when they cry if they aren't really in danger or pain. My wife will sometimes look at me and say, Nick, you're really going to fight that fight? And I'll just smile at her and say, I'm always going to fight this fight. I'm going to fight the fight because I'm not going to let these kids become spoiled brats. I'm not going to let them become rich, spoiled assholes who take from the world way more than they give and they feel entitled to a life of ease because of what their parents did or what their last names are. I'm not going to raise children who bitch out a server at a restaurant because they didn't see the water was running low. I'm not going to make that call to get my kids off the hook if they get in trouble, if they get a DUI, or if they do something really stupid. They are going to pay for their actions. They're going to live with the consequences of their decisions. I'm not going to call the coach and complain about playing time. I'm not going to build a culture of gossip and blaming others and talking bad about other people in my house. We'll do none of that in my house. I'm going to teach my kids how to struggle with grace. They'll understand life isn't easy and they'll know how to fail. They'll expect it and they'll know how to get back up again on their own. I'll be there for them. I'll support them. I'll love them. I'll teach them. I'll care for them and I'm going to help them as much as I possibly can. But these kids are going to understand that life is hard and they're going to understand that they can't always get what they want. That's my son Everett's favorite song, by the way. He tries to say it. Hey, Alexa, play You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones on Nick's Spotify. I talked to both of my boys for about five minutes each night while holding them really close and kissing them all over their faces. While they're laying there in bed, and I'm basically on top of them holding their little heads in my big hands and kissing them all over, I tell them all the things that I love about them. I tell them how fast they are running. I tell them how kind they are to their friends. I tell them how proud of them I am, how helpful they are when they stirred the pot for mommy or while making dinner, how good they are at building Legos or making a puzzle. And I can just see them light up. I can see them light up with pride. I tell them that they can do anything. I tell them that they're going to do amazing things. And I tell them how unbelievable they are. I ask them each night just for fun if they want to hear the Big Bad Wolf story, which is both of their favorite stories, or if they want to hear all the things dad loves about them. And one of the things I'm most proud of is for the last 30 nights in a row, they've both said they want to hear all the things I love about them. They could care less about the Big Bad Wolf story. They really love that. My life goal of exactly what I want to accomplish in this world is very clear to me. I've done a lot of thinking, done a lot of talking to older people, successful, unsuccessful, and the like. And it doesn't involve money or storage facilities or vacation homes or bottles of rare bourbon. I can picture it now. I'm an old man, I'm sitting in a comfortable chair, and I have my beautiful bride of 50 years right next to me. It's Christmas time, and I have grandkids running everywhere. It's total chaos in my house. There's 20 plus people that I love all around me and kids everywhere. And it's just chaos. My house is getting torn to pieces. I'll just be sitting there smiling. That right there is living the dream. And that right there is how I'll know if I did my job here on this planet or not. Of course, there'll be bonus points. If the bourbon in my hand is rare, if I have a son or daughter, interested in working in the real estate business with dad or if we played a round of golf before the day before as a family. But those are just details and they're not that important. Onward and upward. Juniper Square, the sponsor of this show, recently conducted some research to help you understand what real estate investment managers are doing to build stronger relationships with their investors and earn more referrals to new investors. Their new special report includes data on topics such as what factors are the most important for building investment relationships today, how technology is being used to provide a competitive edge, and the one technology integration that is driving more repeat investors and more referrals. 
To download this for free, visit junipersquareresearch.com. Again, to get this report for free, visit junipersquareresearch.com. Before you go, we have a new sponsor of the show, recostseg.com. And if you bought a piece of real estate, you need to get a cost segregation study done. It's what allows you to get all that sweet, sweet bonus depreciation. And it's how real estate investors like me and many others pay almost nothing in taxes on an annual basis. You can cost seg a single family rental, a short term rental, or a large commercial property. Um, RECostSeg.com is affordable and aggressive and super fast to turn them around. They've done 10 plus cost segs for me this year. They're going to do many more for me. Um, visit RECostSeg.com to learn more. <laughs>